Alrighty guys, Big Thunderman here bringing you another episode of my Age of Empires series. This one is the stiffest competition yet, and it is on Amazonia, which was an all-map selection, so it was random. We didn't know which map we were going to play on. Um, it's me and a green guy who's a Lance Corporal. Uh, we're Russian and Portuguese, respectively. Um, I'm a private, and we're playing against the team colors of blue and yellow and yellow is a sergeant and blue is a private also like me um i start off immediately trying to grab food trying to get villagers on different crates um i put a lot more on wood initially than i normally do but i did that because i wanted to start walling in our coastline as fast as possible um amazonia is a map that is too basically halves divided by water that must be crossed by ship. Um, being Portuguese I felt like I had a major advantage because of my extra town center and also my two tower shipment card which I have in this deck so I was feeling fairly confident that we could pull this off. It never even registered to me that we were playing a sergeant and that he was going to be good. Anyway I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> um, I got a uh, Coin, uh, a chest of coin to start out with, very good, helps me out a lot. I also start with a market, also a big help. Um, I think the map with my extra TC gives us an advantage. I was letting my teammate know. Um, it, it's a real hassle sometimes to play uh, two on two with strangers because you can't talk in game very much and you can't communicate well. Um, anyway, I scout across the map just to see what's up. Um, I look at the treasures. The treasures here really were a game tra changer. I believe the first treasure I grab is a, um, or the next treasure I grab is that one. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Let me edit that. Um, I know that there are two experienced treasures on our side, plus a very good gold treasure, and I end up getting all three of those, and that really gives me a major boost up. Anyway, you can see me starting to line out a wall for the coast. I try to make it hug the coast as close as possible. Because I don't want him to be able to land men, although he still will be able to, I believe. Um, I also heard from a very good player that you're supposed to age with oh, 12 or 13 villagers for Portuguese. I think I'm going to age with 14 here. Also, if you notice in that brief flash, I did change up my deck just to mix it up to get rid of the fishing card, not knowing I was going to be on a water map. It ends up working really well because I have two wood cards, and in a map where naval battles are or two wood gathering raid cards. In a map where naval battles are going to decide the outcome of the game, probably. Very lucky card decision. Notice this treasure I'm going for. I believe 105 coin. Excellent treasure because it will allow me to buy our my first uh, warship. The uh, I believe it's called a Carvel. Cavero. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, to be honest. But it's going to allow me to buy my warship without having to make uh, any coin uh, gathering effort. I just have to get the 300 wood. I already will have the 100 coin necessary right away for making the um, ship, which is very good. Um, I immediately start to go for the other treasure. Um, putting villagers on food. I have two on wood. I'm trying to, in the back of my head, make sure I can build a dock as fast as possible. I'm not necessarily planning to rush him, but I want to get a ship and get villagers over there and hopefully hide in a corner of his map and start to build a forward base unlikely but if I can do that it's really gonna give me and my teammate a huge leg up in the advantage um also notice I'm already starting to wall up our coastline um, the Amazon coastline is divided between ridges and flats so you only really need to wall up the flats to keep enemy from landing but it's also very important with Amazon coastline to be aware of your coast at all times I wasn't happy at all the green wasn't exploring his part of the coast. Green pissed me off a lot this game to be honest, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, I wasn't happy he wasn't exploring his coast. And the reason why is this because I don't know what's over there. So now I have to get my explorer, my villager over there to explore it, which frustrates me, but what 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 can I do? I don't know the guy. Sadly, it's a random game. Um notice I I hold off uh, a sending a shipment. I really want to be able to focus on getting the wood in the next age. That that's really my biggest goal. Um and get the wood. Uh, I shoot the treasure guardian and then I run away. Uh, there's a technique you can use where you run away and if you can get away fast enough just when he starts to run away you shoot him 
and then he runs back, then you run away and you shoot him. I was too lazy to do that entire thing, but that's generally the way you can conserve your uh, explorer hit points. Very good technique there. Um, because of that little shenanigan, I missed aging up instantly, but I aged fairly closely. It wasn't a huge loss. Um, I'm really excited to get my second town center. I'm going to put it right on the coast. It's my kind of my plan. I want to... Um, I want to get the town center on the coast, I want to get the two towers on the coast, I want to make it so he can't land, and I already have a villager out there. It's a daunting task to fortify a coastline and sneak villagers over on a dock and a boat you built all within a few minutes, but I gotta get that done. That be the, That's our only chance to win the game, because I don't think either me or my teammate have the deck prepared for a long-term war, and especially when you consider that the minute our wood runs out, then we rely on factories, navy, it, it gets really messy if we just hole up on our side and leave it. I'm looking there because I'm waiting for 200 wood to build a dock. I can't. Um, I already queued up some settlers actually after my aging. Not necessarily smart, but I know that after I age I'm going to be really focused on about a dozen other things. I want to make sure that my brief distraction won't screw me over long term. Um, I'm a little bit different than other players. A lot of other players move around every single villager and they, they click them tons of random times and do things. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying that for me personally, I really um try to focus on uh get all my villagers set up, get them tasked, and let them do their thing. Um, I didn't manage herds well this game, though. I will admit that. I kind of let herds get blown about everywhere, but I wasn't planning to fight on our side, but you'll see how that bites me in the rear end. Um, yeah, I let herds go everywhere. I figured it was contained half. It was. I, I just didn't see it because because there was no way for them just to march over. I wasn't worried about them uh, instantly coming here. Um, another mistake I made. I should have had the waypoint for the town center already set to head towards the coast. I wasted time there. Not great. I also wasted time with getting that wood gathered. Not great. I'm still learning, trying to pick up tips from more advanced players. Um. I send the wood instantly, towers next, and I think I hover over the crossbow men and then I decide not to. And I go for the wood um, production card, and I go for the wood production card despite the fact it's a weird choice because I predict very soon that I will be stuck in a naval battle. And the minute I'm in a naval battle, the person who gets the most wood will win. Um, notice I grab the other experience treasure, and that's really why I have three uh, treasures available at this point in time. I'm still scouting, looking around. I see that. I think it's a pet jaguar. I didn't really have a need of a pet jaguar, so I wasn't concerned about um, grabbing that treasure. Uh, I build the town center right where I'm able to. Slightly off more than I planned, but I didn't really know where else to build it. I keep having my villager walk up the coastline. At this point, I was really mad at Green. I'm like, dude, you haven't... Uh, walled up any I, I didn't know what was going on I didn't see him gathering from herds it's really costly if I can say this without being an absolute jerk to have a less than stellar teammate in the game but you'll see you'll see more um, as the game progresses um I think I shipped some people to a uh, coin yeah I want to get that four coin I want to get um, aged up I just start scouting I want to see his coastline I want to see if he's walled if I can sneak villages over what's going on that coast is open. I'm going to go over to see the rest of the coast. Um, I would have rather been able to uh, shift or ship the uh, two towers directly to the new town center I built, but I, I wasn't built in time, probably because of my own stupidity. Again, bad uh, waypoint thing. I should have sent the towers to that side of the beach, but I set them by my dock because traditional wisdom in a sea battle, if I can get the buildings firing on his ships, I win. If he gets his buildings firing on my ships, he wins. So it became very important for me to protect my dock and have a place where I can just flee my ship and get back to a safe area immediately. I see his um, dock. I didn't know he had aged. At no, I knew he had aged. I didn't expect him to have a ship yet. So I just start pelting it, hoping that, hey, I'll get the attack before he does. Um, just general generic strategy, I guess, at this point. Um still attacking the dock hoping that maybe I'll get lucky and take it down if I do he loses whatever um, ship he ordered that didn't get made in time and he loses a 200 wood from the dock but alas he gets his ship out in time and that really gives me a bad thing because I wasn't watching that ship so he got a little bit more damage on me initially than he should have he pursues me I'm hoping that he'll be stupid enough to stay over here um, 
He doesn't get very close, but then he gets him within range of my town center. I'm hoping he'll stay over here and fight, but he does a very smart thing and leaves. Um, notice he's a sergeant, um, much higher than everybody else in this match, so he played at like a sergeant. He played inc very well, at least. Um, I run over to go attack the ship. I think I was very foolish there because I go back to look at the ship. Why did I queue? Okay, that was a mistake. I go back to queue the ship. There was a little bit of lag, and there's a blockhouse. And at this point, I realized, crap, I really screwed up by not watching that ship. I lost to Carville. Another, again, another big mistake by me that really wasn't a wise choice. But that's what this series is about. It's about looking at my mistakes and learning from it and getting better. At uh, this point, I realize I'm not going to win a naval battle, but I don't think he has the strength to come over here. So I'm going to hopefully just sneak some village, a villager over there. The villager who built the walls is sitting by the trees. I'm going to send her over there. I, I sent the flare, by the way, to my teammate. I wanted to know immediately, hey, get your ass over here. We got work to do. On the bright side, though, I have been doing fairly well, making sure I'm making villagers and houses. I'm not going to lose the game because of a stupid mistake. Green isn't ready to go. Nine minutes into the game, he's a Russian. He wasn't ready to even send villagers or men over there. I wasn't happy. I see a scout there. I choose not to disembark because I don't want Blue to know exactly that I have men there. So I keep firing at the scout. The scout runs away. I let the villager off. Um, I don't send the villager off after the scout, by the way. I send him d the villager directly to the side, knowing what the map generally should look like traditionally. I figure, all right, it's okay. At this point, Blue attacks me, and this was a huge mistake. I really should have been building towers. Notice I have over a thousand wood. I never even bothered to finish building towers outside of that one spot. Very foolish choice. Um, I ordered the eight crossbowmen just because I need to be prepared to repel a Strelet invasion. Uh, Green fortunately has some people there, so I wasn't super worried. Um. I realize at this point Green is most likely just going to spam Sirlet, so I make some uh, I make a stable on their side, hoping that all right, uh, Calvary can do it. Uh, yellow Sirlets disappear. I assumed I was okay. I repair the wall. Um, another mistake here. I get, wasn't constantly producing villagers. I kind of got slightly distracted. And I think that's the th key to the game. Whoever gets less distracted and makes villagers more continuously wins the game. At least that's my hypothesis. Take it for what you will. It's just a thought. Um, I get the eight crossbowmen there. Good to have a little bit of a defensive force. Uh, I build my stable on his side. He hasn't noticed. Blue's behind, but I don't really have the ability to attack. I don't think... Well, I think I do, but I'm not... Uh, what's the word? I don't know. I just wasn't ready to start spamming men. Um, I don't. Oh, okay. I do start making hussars instantly, but then again, you gotta remember these are two towns close together. Probably the the Russians already rushed, so we know that the Russian already has military potential. He's got blockhouses. Besides from some light pressure, I don't know how much I can do, but I intend to put whatever pressure on him I can. Because remember, when you're thinking about the pressure you're having to avoid, you're not thinking about pressuring your enemy. That's a, something I'll talk about there. Notice that barrack thing is fitting, fitted in the trees. Don't know how that was possible, but I love that that was there. It's much easier than having my men wide out and in the open. I keep making villagers from my two um, town centers, really giving me an economic... I don't know if it's an advantage, but definitely a good economic thing. I look over there, and I finally start to build the tower, and I see his ship leave. And I realize at that point I made a critical mistake. I made a critical mistake with my walling. I must have missed a place on the side where he can wall. Um, I sent some men over there immediately to um, investigate, and there is a bunch of strelets marching my town. This was by far my toughest game. I'm not going to spoil the ending, but... I didn't play very well, so it was, and I didn't, in my opinion, have, I didn't have the greatest teammate. We didn't have good communication, so I didn't know what he was doing, so I wasn't bitter about it, but it just didn't work out well. Anyway, I see the Strelets there, I have a town center, I have a barracks. To be honest, Strelets have awful siege. I wasn't that worried about it. Maybe I should have been more worried, I just didn't see the Strelets being a massive deal. His army walking around doing all sorts of craziness. Just... I wasn't super worried. Uh, that villager there, I don't know why she attacked. Frustrating, but whatever. Um, I'm getting ready to start raiding him, by the way, on the other side. He's attacking the market, kind of, I believe. He's fighting two armies. I didn't see it being a 
big problem. Again, probably not wise of me, but Strelets are unit killers, they're not siege at any point in the game. They're not meant to be siege, they're not good at being siege. I throw up the, the Hussars towards his town, hoping for an attack to get some pressure on them. I was worried that Blue was going to do a fast fortress and get cannons or something, or some big craziness, but none. I see a stable, I'm worried that I'm going to start having Hussars pop up in my base. This game is looking very bad at this particular point in time. Again, even though I've been attacked, I still have a higher score than my ally. I don't know what he was doing. He might have been doing well, he might not have. I'm just saying, lack of communication. And that's exactly what I'm talking about right there, though, with having close bases and a good player. He was able to get um, Sorlets in his town almost instantly. I kept running through, though, because I wanted to find somewhere I could maybe kill some settlers a little bit more in peace. Find his town, I attack those settlers, um, does some good, slows down his economy a little bit. I'm hoping that he's looking there instead of at my town. He is, I'm able to kill those villagers fairly simply and move on. Um, at this point I have 19 on coin. I really made a mistake with some resource management at times in this game. It's hard to manage two armies and an economy and growing and a sea battle. Tons of things that need to be going on. I see him bombarding my walls, my heart's just kind of sinking, this was not a good battle. He's got a galleon, very smart move by him, he's a good player, he was prepared, he wasn't um, capable or he hadn't been able to get the uh, blockhouse built so he does the next best thing, he parks the galleon and starts making men on my side of the base, really giving them a huge thumbs up. I uh, keep running around this town hoping to distract him. Uh, let's see what happens. Um, I send them there. Uh, he keeps pressuring me. I sent my naval fleet there to engage, by the way. I thought I could take it, but I can't quite. Um, Green, by the way, has joined me. We kind of got a little bit base set up there, and that's a really good base, by the way. Um, two block houses, uh, two barracks, and the sta stable definitely has some capacity. His Strelats start marching around the map, and this was where, I don't know what was going on with him, but he started to make a little bit of a mistake. I don't know what was going on. Um, Green did play very well in this instance. He built a blockhouse in my town, since my town was a more predominant one, or at least the one that everybody knew where it was. Very wise move by Green. Some of his decisions baffled me, some of his didn't. I got my villagers out and onto food fairly quickly. I wanted to keep up production. Um... Green makes some men. Green Green did fairly well in defense this match. Um, he really saved me there. Um, I still have Hussars running around. I just want him to be thinking about the Hussars rather than me. At this point, their scores though are way higher than ours. They're in our base. They got a foothold. Hard to unreach. It was really just... It wasn't pretty. I wasn't able to get it going this game, really. It, it was very much in trouble. I keep making villagers though, because even though I'm in trouble, that is the key to the game. Make villagers, make villagers, make villagers. If I can make men, I have a chance of turning it around. If I can't make men, I have no chance of turning it around. It was the right thing to try to turn it around. Um, I think I tell Red at this point to pull back. I know I do later. But the reason why is this. We have two blockhouses and a good, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. We have two blockhouses and a good uh, stronghold or foothold in his town. I, I, I look at his town, I'm thinking about it, and he now will have the pressure of dislodging us, whereas we have the pressure of dislodging him from our side of the map. So, if we can maintain our little foothold and defeat his attack, we'll win the game. Um, he's doing a fairly good job. He stopped my Hussars, um, but Blue never launched, at least not yet, a major attack on my... Uh, my uh, our base there. He did send some Hussars, but wasn't able to dislodge us. And even though he's in the third age, he really should have gotten some uh, cavalry or something. I see the thirty musket, the thirty strelets. Again, not a good scenario. I build a stable there, hoping that I can get some barracks. Barracks. I build a stable so I can get some barracks. No, I build a stable there, hoping that I can get some Hussars on those strelets immediately. Um. Hazars will eat them like candy, so very good situation. I think at this point, I'm fighting with some muskets. I think I decide to pull back, which at that point, you notice how fast he just killed two of my men. I was hoping that hopefully I could get them away near the towers. 
At that point, I figured running and fighting by the towers will save me more men than standing there and dying will. And that's just kind of the opportunity cost you have to make. You have to decide if moving your men in combat is a better or worse decision. Anyway, again, he starts walking around the map. I'm not quite sure what he was doing. I sent my villagers into the thing. Um, I start making some hussars. Uh, he really put pressure on me, but overall I was able to keep up production. Notice at this point, I have 41 uh, settlers. I doubt that he has that. I doubt that anybody else so far on the map has that. So definitely a good thing. I just make sure I move my villagers out of the way wherever he's walking. And Green sends a decent sized counter army to go. Um, and notice at this point, I'm keeping my men back there. I want to keep it on our uh, side. I asked Green to do something there. And I said that because I looked over there and I didn't see any men at the forward base of Green's. And I only saw about five of Green's men here. I don't want to be mean to Green, but I was very frustrated at that point. I didn't realize until afterwards exactly what he had done. I mean, while he wasn't great, he wasn't all that useless. He did save my rear end a few times here on defense. Um, I get villager production going again because remember the key to the game is resources. No, the key to the game is military, and you can't fund a military without food and resources. So I keep up villager production even though I'm in trouble. Um, I have that army there. It's good to keep that army there. I see those uh, those French settlers, uh, couriers, I believe they're called, walking by. I think, you know what, I got to take a stab at those. He's got Jerdames. I don't know why he's paying for them, but my first thought was, is he going to Jerdames spam? But I realized, thinking in my head, that he was going to lose that game if he tried to Jerdames spam. Because by the time you could get to the fourth age and get an economy good enough to do it, we'll have beat him back yellow if... We're fighting yellow single-handedly and probably killed him. So, good scenario for us. I go there. I think I go to attack them. I just want to screw them up. And I, for fortunately, on the very edge of my sight, see that blockhouse get placed. Sure, whether it was sheer luck or brilliance, that was exactly the break I needed. I needed to be able to get a jump up on um, yellow. I send my ship back, trying to save it before it dies. It does. I get to his settlers and start killing them, thereby preventing the blockhouse from getting. He runs. I think in that instance, I don't know whether it would have been wiser to stay and build it, but I do know that if he had built it and been able to get it off with fast training, he would have been in a much better position than losing the settlers, losing the wood that he invested into it, and um, allowing me to really regain a hold of our side of the map. He makes more men, but Green has joined me. I am there. Um... Green make a navy. Yeah, at this point I was really frustrated because I was having to shoulder the cost of the entire navy there and deal with all the ships. I figured, Green, you're not... I, I didn't see him doing anything. And t even here you can see that while he wasn't a completely bad player, it just wasn't great. Um, I keep making houses. I need to keep population up even though I have 120. And he keeps spamming strelets. Not a great position. I fortunately have enough economic... Uh, power to make Hazars to counter him and he sends more men I'm happy about that I keep queuing up more villagers at this point I'm at 48 and the reality of the game was that even though they both or blue was far superior in economy and yellow really was owning us militarily my only chance to win was in making villagers and being able to keep up the good fight so I use my two town center advantage to the advantage I use my forward base to the advantage. I kind of just run into his town hoping that I can freak blue out enough to kind of just paralyze him some more. He's been very kindly paralyzed for most of the fight so far. Um, if he had attacked us, we probably wouldn't have won. I don't know if green would have been able to get enough men there or sustain it. I know I wouldn't have been able to sustain a war there and a war against um, yellow on our own turf. And I say a war against yellow even though green helped a lot. It was very hard for me to kind of stretch my resources. I see him once again walking to the town center. I just merely move my villagers over. I didn't just hide all my villagers every time he attacked. Uh, the warning bell can be a very good thing, but it can be very foolish. Um, it's much easier to leave one villager in the town center and hide your villagers somewhere else and keep gathering resources than it is to run away. He tries again to make the blockhouse this time. I have three carvels going for his ships. Um, I start to burn the blockhouse while my navy fights his navy and then I send my navy I believe my my hussars 
to after destroying um, the blockhouse, I sent my hussars to go siege the ships. When you have your ships close enough to shore, they can be shot at or uh, get siege damage on them. I go to do that. I make more men here because I want to be prepared to handle whatever blue is going to throw at us. Um, and I was able to destroy his galleon and his carvel because my hussars were able to siege. So. A, a, a mistake there, a slight one, one not noticed, but leaving his ships close to shore cost him pro arguably the game, because if he had been able to defeat my navy there and keep up the pressure, he probably would have won the match. I think I just spoiled it. I'm sorry. We did win, by the way, but it was close. But then look at our town, what's going on. More yellow troops in the middle of our base shooting things up. And... I haven't done anything about it yet. Did I not notice? I noticed now. Did I not notice? Maybe I didn't notice. Um, how come I didn't notice that? Yeah, I played. I made a foolish mistake. At this point, that coast was really my biggest concern, though. So you can't really blame me there. I don't know what those men are doing. It looks like they're just staying there. And Green, bless his dear, dear heart, goes off to engage. Um. Do I notice when the alarm bell starts ringing? I hope I do. Again, I'm looking here. I'm working on fighting and maintaining it. Green takes care of it. So Green does do a lot for me. I see that falconet sitting on the edge of his town, and I say, you know what? I gotta grab that up. It's a big, big um, advantage for him to have a falconet, but he didn't have any military around it. I was able to run in, kill it, and run out. I lost. I don't know if I lost any men. I didn't lose any men. I took some damage, but I didn't lose any men. Definite advantage. Green is doing a great job right now. Bless his dear heart. He's killing Yellow's remnants of army and I'm sorry to our base. I get a galleon up. I don't know why I made one. I just felt like it. But I'm getting ready to dominate navally. Um, at this point, my score is really uh, just skyrocketed all of a sudden. And the reason why was despite the fact we were under a lot of pressure and everything, I kept making villagers... It's really now almost put me in the driver's seat. I'm not, this game isn't over, but this game can be over soon because I I really now have a very strong economy. Yellow's backed up against a wall, hypothetically at least. Anyway, I send more Hussars. I send them across the map there because I want to try to just get pressure on him. And in comes some Strelets, and I run backwards, hoping to lure his Strelets in, thinking if those Strelets come in between two blockhouses, our military and the Hussars, they'll be eaten alive. Anyway, I patch up the wall, and it looks like it is good news here. And I still didn't notice that yellow army on our side of the base. I don't know why. I don't pay very much attention to my mini map, to be completely honest, so, um, totally foolish of me, less, good lesson to learn there, um, I micro my hussars, I pulled them back there because, again, I didn't want them just to die to the cavalry, I wanted the cavalry to attack the musketeers, which would have a better chance of fighting and living than I did me, and at this point, by the way, I also start, um, shifting to, uh, farms. Herds are almost dry, so I'm just making sure that I can get lots of settlers on farms and my food production stable. Um, we really have an army advantage at this point, and this might be where I tell yellow or green to pull back. Um, I realize he has a fort there. If we pursue his men into his town, we lose the very advantage we have. So, And also, I think he has more men now than us, so it makes no sense to keep attacking at least it doesn't watch in the recording back. I keep attacking. I think I lose some Mazars through that stupidity. Alright, here I realize, alright, we gotta get out of here. This is bad news bears. Um, Green realizes quickly, and again, the, the, the advantage is again on us. And then don't discount the advantage of towers or uh, blockhouses in your war. The, the difference is immense. And I accidentally attacked the Treasury Guardian, so now I have to kill the Treasury Guardian and kill his men. Um, Yellow unfortunately had some of his men follow us instead of doing whatever they were supposed to do. I feel bad for the guy. It sucks, but what are you going to do about it? So anyway, the game keeps going on. And at this point, I'm ready for the big naval battle. I figure I have enough of an advantage. I know that uh, Yellow must be putting tons of wood into the Strelets. I assumed I would have a bigger naval advantage than I do. 
but I think I have enough to win it. I destroy a ship, and I think I run back. I don't think I've lost any at this point, so it seemed wise to me to run back. The war keeps going on, we keep making more men, and this is really where the game starts to shift. You know, most of the game we looked in a lot of trouble. For a few points there when Yellow had all those Strelites on our side, I thought for sure we were going to lose. I was going to upload a loss. I'm like, darn it, I'm uploading my first loss, but it's okay. It was a good game. I tried hard. But we ended up pulling through. And we really won because of the advantage that defensive buildings had on the game. Um, I kept telling... Uh, green to pull back just because I didn't want to run in because running in there into a fort and whatever defensive buildings he has really will make the swing of the game it's a difference between the, are you taking more damage or are they taking more damage also we have the advantage of our men arrive at the battlefield faster than the men we train so by by standing on our side of the map we put the pressure on the yellow to march onto our side, kill us on our turf, and keep the supply line or supply train up. In traditional warfare, keeping be or at least ancient traditional warfare, keeping a supply train was the, one of the biggest challenges of an army because they would have to consider how to move their army and how to feed all the men. My, in uh, Age of Empires 3, it's less of a th deal, but it is still true. The the less distance your men have to walk to go fight, the uh, more effective fighters they'll be and the more men you'll have on the battlefield so by forcing him to fight on our our side of the the trade route you can say where we um have our defensive positions we can also get our men there faster um which is a great advantage yeah uh for blue it doesn't make much of a difference but he really didn't attack much he put his resources into the jerdames which weren't a very effective move just because we had so many infantry and towers he never really was able to make it so it was like oh my gosh he has a million your names it was always like oh here's three or four or five or six we can handle this we have a major advantage again at this point I, we don't pu keep pushing forward and the reason for that simply is this he has a fort in his town he has a home field advantage we're going to keep that just like in chess i play chess i love chess i'm just like in chess we're doing here we're controlling the board hypothetically and we're i'm um, forcing him to come to attack on our terms where we're stronger and accept our terms of the trade in chess if you trade pieces you take a piece or you set up a trade that he can choose to accept and if he accepts the trade you generally want a trade that either gets you a better position or that um get you a piece generally against great players you can only get a better position if that because they think so far ahead and it's a game position in, in age of empires 3 not only will we get the pieces of killed units with our allied units we'll also get the advantage of position um and able to pressure him at will so a little bit of thought there i know that age of empires definitely is a micro game but there's the strategy behind it there is some ancient general strategy there that can be utilized to a limited degree but it's not completely absent I looked to see what green's doing I was just curious I never really saw green around the map gathering re resources so I was kinda like what are you doing man anyway at this point I have a major score advantage on any on everybody in the game and the reason why is I have 73 settlers throughout all the fighting throughout everything that's gone wrong throughout all the pressure I have made settlers and that is an advantage that will not let you down. If you can keep those settlers alive and keep that resource flow going, they're in good shape. At this point, I start to make artillery and yellow quit and then um, blue quit. So I don't know what blue did um, the game. Blue really was a non factor. Blue should have done something. I thought for sure he was feeding a yellow, but I later look and see that he didn't. So in the game, it was an interesting game. We were able to win. Um, Blue, I think, was trying some form of fast fortress uh, courier spam, but that didn't work out, so then he switched to muskets. Didn't do him much good. I had um, a superior navy. Uh, notice I'm checking the hit points there to see if my upgrades come. They hadn't, but I had a superior navy. We walled our coast, which is always a must on this map. Um, and we kept the pressure. And I think that's a huge part of this game is when you're in trouble, when you're in pressure, you keep your head, you play, you make your villagers, you make sure you keep the resources coming in, you take the position advantage if it's possible, and you play well. 
Anyway, just so you're wondering, I upload um, everything I record. So, I know this is my fourth match, and it's a fourth win in a row, but that's really because I honestly have won all four matches I've recorded. I haven't recorded any other matches and deleted them. It's a real hassle for me to record. I, I, I don't know. It just I have trouble with it. it. It's a huge file. So, anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. It's a pleasure to have you guys um, look at me and see what I'm doing. Um, I will lose some point in the future, but it's not today. Barely managed to escape with the victory against a sergeant who played very well. Anyway, this was a great game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, thank you. Please subscribe and comment and keep an eye out for more. Adios, guys.